I'm Ryan Dobson. I run an organization called Rebel Parenting. We podcast three times a week, uh, helping moms and dads be better spouses and better parents. A lot of people ask us about what it was like growing up in the house of James Dobson. Um, and up until the sixth grade, very normal. Uh, kind of like any other family out there. I didn't know we were famous. I didn't know my parents were famous. I just thought they were mom and dad. And one day in school, in the sixth grade, we had a substitute teacher. She was taking role. And she said, Ryan Dobson. I said, here. And she goes, oh, like Dr. Dobson. And I go, well, yeah, that's my dad. And she said, oh, honey, I know you wish he was. And I thought, what a weird thing to say. Like, this is just my parents. And I didn't respond. And in that instant, the whole classroom erupts. And everybody's going, that's his dad. His dad's James Dobson. And I thought, why does everyone know who my dad is? What's going on? And then she got really embarrassed. I couldn't understand that. I mean, I'm just a regular sixth grader. The next day I show up at school, still have a substitute teacher, and now she's got a stack of my dad's books for me to bring home for him to autograph for her. And I thought, what is going on? And that was kind of the floodgates opening. I didn't know that all the carpools were listening to my dad's show every day on the way to school, that he was telling stories about us. And apparently that was the trigger that let everybody know, like, oh, now we can talk about who your dad is in front of you. And uh, that was a little strange, I gotta be honest. And I read my own ministry. And so there was that kind of trepidation of, I think I can help people, but I grew up with a family of experts. And I'm not an expert, I'm a parent. I'm a husband, I fail all the time. I'm stumbling through life just trying to get a little better every day. My dad was an expert expert. He did the Focus on the Family film series released in 1979, and he was 43. It's really young, but at 43, he had an undergrad, an earned PhD from USC. He was on staff at Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. He was a professor of pediatrics at USC School of Medicine, professor of family development at Point Loma. He had been a teacher, a junior high counselor, a high school counselor, a district counselor, private practice counselor, and he had three bestsellers. At 43, like, he really, really knew what he was talking about. And what he really tried to do is use his PhD and science to prove what he already knew to be true from the Bible. And so he was telling people, listen, science and the Bible don't butt heads. It's completely intermeshed. It goes hand in hand together. The Lord knew that I created you before you were born. I knit you together in your mother's womb. You've got a unique personality. And when he was getting his PhD in the 60s, they were saying children are tabula rosa. They are blank slates and it's all the parent. However your child acts is 100% your fault. Well, parenting already induces so much shame and so much guilt, and it's this job that you don't know if you're doing a good job until it's far too late. And he was saying, I, I think kids are born of the temperament. You know, my sister was strong-willed. I was really compliant, but we came out of the womb that way. You didn't have to, you know, you'd look at me funny in the rearview mirror, and it would be like, what, sit, stand, sit, no, jump, sit, what do I do? And you know, Danae was a little bit different. She was more, you know, she had that kind of fighter spirit growing up. We were born that way. And so you don't have to parent every child exactly the same. And I think he gave parents a break and he really gave them this great toolbox of things you can use with your kids, different methods you can try, ways to reach them more. And he was really trying to get parents into their children's lives. He started Focus on the Family in 1976 when I was six years old. And then the Focus on the Family film series came out in 79. He's a unique individual. Uh, at one time, he was speaking to 330 million people every single week. He had seven of the top 10 bestsellers at the same time. I mean, he is amazing. And I was telling him all this, and he was like, Ryan, stop. And I'm like, isn't it amazing that the Lord has used you in such mighty ways? I mean, you've advised four presidents over decades and decades and decades. He's still doing it in his 80s. He works five days a week. He's doing radio five days a week. In the last six years, he wrote four books, did a new film series, put out an undergrad and graduate curriculum through Liberty University. He's just amazing. About eight years ago, Focus on the Family, my dad split ways, and I kind of thought he'd retire. You know, he had done, in my view, he had done enough. And I was on vacation, and he called and said, I'm gonna start a new ministry. And I said, really? Do you want to? And he said, well, not really. And I said, well, then why are you doing it? He said, the Lord told me last night he's not done with me yet. And I said, well, then definitely don't ignore him 
for sure do it. Well, I had been podcasting for years. I've podcasted for over 15 years now. I started before iTunes was released. And I, I know it's so silly. I read about podcasting in Wired Magazine. I remember thinking that day, oh, I'm gonna do this the rest of my life. This is what I'm gonna do forever. And I went home, there was no iTunes. It was just so complicated and so convoluted, but I really believed in it. And so I'd been podcasting for years at that point. Uh, and when he said he was gonna go back on the radio, I said, I really wanna try out and be your co-host. And he laughed. And I thought, hey, I'm really good at this. I've been doing this for a while. You gotta let me try out. And to his credit, this is completely my dad. He said, well, Ryan, we can try this, but if we don't work together well, and if you're not good, if people don't like you, then I can't keep you as my co-host. I mean, just because you're my son doesn't mean you can do this. And I was like, well, I think I'm pretty good at this. I think we might work out well. And we had a ball. I'm telling you, I have never learned more about broadcasting and interviews and how to be a co-host. It is so hard to be a co-host. And early on, he'd be interviewing like Chuck Colson and they're, they're talking about these amazing, brilliant things. And I'm just sitting there like, oh my goodness. And I remember his producer at the time wrote me a note like, you need to talk more on the broadcast. And I was like, who wants to hear from me? It's Chuck Colson and my dad. And they were like, but you're a young parent. You're newly married. This is your wheelhouse. And they really pulled me out of my shell. And I mean, we had uh, six or seven years together. I was vice president of broadcast. And I mean, uh, what better thing to do? It's hanging out with your dad every single day, interviewing these brilliant minds, all while helping the family. I mean, what a treat. And then I get to do it today. I did a Facebook Live interview yesterday. It was uh, out on the internet. Last night, I had a mom email me saying, my husband and I just found out our 14-year-old's been sneaking out of the house. She lost her virginity. We're heartbroken. We don't know what, you can, we don't know what to do. Can you help us? And I was like, well, time to put the big boy pants on. Like, that's what I asked for. The crises we get at Rebel Parenting, uh, pornography, addiction, infidelity. It's everywhere. I mean, it's just everywhere. This overreaching thing that we get that I finally named, we call it Together Alone. And you've got a husband and wife on the couch and he's watching sports center on the TV and she's on Instagram on her phone. And they're together, but they're alone. Oh, they're up in bed and she's watching, you know, Desperate Housewives and, and he's watching a movie on his iPad. And they're in close proximity, but they're drifting apart. You know, and the culture is driving that. And we're saying, my goodness, when marriage is good, there is no describing it. It is, it is like you're on the, my wife believes I can do things I know that I can't do. How crazy is that? Like she, she believes with all of her heart, I can do things that I know in my heart I cannot do, but because she believes in me that way, I do these things. And that's what a great marriage is. When marriage is bad, it's the loneliest place in the world. You live with someone, you're in bed with someone, and you're by yourself every day. And it's so painful. I'm divorced. I was married before. You know, I remember going through a divorce and thinking, I'll never work again. Here I am, son of Dr. James Dobson, child and family expert, going through a horrible divorce. But I've been there. I've been alone in a house with another person. Anything my new wife, Laura, and I can do to help families, we'll do anything. I and mean, we're celebrating 14 years this year. We met on a blind date. Uh, it was just crazy, right? It's just crazy. We met on a blind date. I asked her to marry me three weeks later. We got married five months after that. On our wedding day, we hadn't known each other six months yet. I mean, we went through all the early learn about each other while being married. You know, that was a little bit crazy at times. But man, when it's good, it is the best. When Laura and I got married, we had these great plans. I mean, we lived by the beach in Southern California and she had been in ministry and I was in ministry. We're gonna do ministry together. We're gonna have babies. We'll be at the beach all the time. One month after we got married, one month, I was speaking with my dad in Colorado and I just heard the Lord say, you should move here. And I was like, what? No, Lord, no. Like, it's winter here, it snows here. Like, I, I like the warm weather, you know? People are like, oh, well, I like seasons. I like the good ones. I like summer and I like a little bit of fall. And then back to summer again. 
uh, and we took the we took the the leap of faith. Uh, November first, uh, over 14 years ago, we moved to Colorado, and uh, it was tough at first. I didn't know why the Lord brought us there. My dad was still at focus on the family; they hadn't split yet. Uh, my work was drying up. I I did I couldn't find work. I didn't know what to do, and I started podcasting. I was doing it more and more, and he was preparing me to go to work with my dad. And then the split happened to watch him go through that with so much grace. Uh, he didn't fight. He didn't bad mouth. He, you know, I mean, goodness, as a son, I just wanted to like throw hands all the time. And watching him do that with as much wisdom and grace as he did was such a treat. Uh, and then we figured it out. He wanted us to work together. And he was preparing me for my career now. I didn't know a lot about broadcasting. I hadn't had producers and, you know, I wasn't broadcasting live on the internet. It wasn't even available when we started together. And then after about six or seven years, um, we just needed to talk about real, unfiltered things that are affecting families. And unfortunately, a lot of Christian radio censors those things off the radio. Uh, if you want to talk about pornography, there's a number of stations that won't ever play it. You want to talk about abuse, they won't play it. Uh, some denominations don't believe in therapy and counseling. If you talk about that, they won't play it. And I just thought, you know what? I can't stand by and watch marriage after marriage after marriage crumble around me and not say, stop looking at porn. Go find counseling. Get to an AA meeting. You know, do something. But if you can't let me say that on the air every day, I got to go someplace else and do it. And I met with my parents and I told them what I was thinking. And I went live and we both cried about it. It was so hard. I love working with them so much. But they understood. He's like, Ryan, you got to do it. You've got to. If the Lord is calling you there, you cannot ignore the call. You got to be honest. It's going to be hard. People are going to hate it. But those that love it are going to love you forever. And we get super, super gnarly stuff. I mean, marriage is under fire. And culture does it too. Culture tells you that the most passion and, you know, the most bedroom time, all that stuff is going to happen in your first year of marriage. And then after that, it's going to start trickling down. And then a decade in, you're not having sex anymore. You've drifted apart and you think to yourself, man, this stinks. But every sitcom and every rom-com movie, you go, well, I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. And then we wonder why pornography is pandemic and why infidelity is out through the ceiling. And it's like, it doesn't have to be that way. It ought to be the opposite. Like it starts with a bang and then it gets better and better. It's like working out. I started CrossFit. <laughs> I won't preach on CrossFit, but I started this a number of years ago. My first workout, I threw up. Like I just thought I was gonna die doing it. Well, I got better and then I got better and then I got better and I started lifting more weights and I started getting healthier and healthier. And it's like, that can be your marriage. Like I look back on the first years of our marriage, I was terrible. I was terrible at everything, but we grew and we worked out and we got counseling and we went to therapy and we started communicating better. And your marriage, I mean, I look at my parents have been married for, let's see, this year, they will be married 59 years. 59 years. My parents love spending time with each other. They've been in Palm Springs for four months while he's working on a book. You know what they do? They hang out all day. After 59 years, all they do is hang out. They talk. They talk about their lives. They have conversations. You think, haven't you run out of stuff to talk about after 59 years? Nope. Because their marriage grew. They worked at it. They invested in each other. My dad says he's a success today because of my mom. I believe that. She was too. National Day of Prayer president for 25 years. Why? Because my dad said, I believe in you. You can do this. It's what we all want. God is love and love comes from God. In 1 John, the Bible tells us that God is not only all loving, but that he actually is love itself. The heart of the Parent Compass television show is to bring the transforming love of God to families everywhere. In every Parent Compass episode, true stories reveal family struggles and how their lives were radically changed by the love of God. Parent Compass, an award-winning television series, is completely funded by people like you. If you have been touched by God and you want to share God's love to others, would you please pass it on? Jesus tells us to go into all the world and to tell about Him. With your donation, you allow us to take this television show into many different nations and in many different languages. 
free of charge. And a portion of your donation goes to Parent Compass Outreach to Feed Starving Children. Your gift does so much. To make your tax-deductible gift, go to parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. That's parentcompass.tv forward slash donate. And thank you for sending love and hope around the world.